Hello, everybody. It's Mark Kep with CampgroundViews.com. Today, I've got a special session with you, and you can see the screen up here. We've got Gamma Sonic Solar Lighting, and Matt is with me today. Matt, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me, Mark. So you and I have actually met. We, you do a lot of the trade shows in, in the camping industry. You travel around a lot, and I've met you at, at trade shows. So I know a little bit about your product, but let's back up. And What is Gamma Sonic? What do you do? And you know, give us that rundown. Okay, uh, Gamasonic is the leading manufacturer of high quality commercial grade pedestrian solar lamp post lighting. Uh, we work with several campgrounds, RV parks, mobile home parks, uh, all over the country. We've got over 300 communities that have tens of thousands of our lights installed. Uh, in 2001 is when our company uh, converted over to solar lighting from uh, electrical emergency lighting. And since that time, we've grown uh, to be the largest manufacturer of uh, solar lamp post lighting that requires no uh, wiring, digging, trenching, or electric whatsoever. So, and, that, and that's actually the secret to your sauce, right? Is that they, it doesn't require any electricity or any wiring to make these things work. So they're the regular, like here, it's a regular light pole on the side of a, a street, right? And that's right. It looks identical to a traditional electrical light pole, whether it be gas or electric. Uh, the only difference is ours are completely solar. There is no wiring, digging, trenching, or electric whatsoever. Uh, it's completely powered by the sun and rechargeable uh, lithium ion batteries that are pre-installed into the head of the light. Uh, once the sun hits the actual solar panels, charges the batteries, the batteries will hold a charge. So even if you have a couple of days of uh, ugly weather, no sun, rain, clouds, overcast, snow, uh, the lights will still come on when the sun goes down and stay on all night until the sun comes up. What's the useful li lifespan of one of these units? The, li the lifespan is 10 years for each of our units. Uh, the only maintenance with any of our lights is every three to five years you need to change the batteries. Uh, and depending on the light, some lights have one battery, some lights have two, some lights have four uh, batteries. So it depends on which light that you go with will determine on how soon you need to change the batteries. But uh, the typical average lifespan of these batteries is between three to three and a half years. Other than that, there's zero other maintenance uh, associated with any of our products. So when we talk about like commercial grade lighting, what's the difference between that versus something you can go buy at like Home Depot or Lowe's? Yeah, and, and that's a great question. Uh, you know, not to knock Home Depot by any means, uh, but a lot of people have what I call the Home Depot mentality when it comes to solar lighting. And that is basically it's the type of uh, light that you go and you purchase, you buy it, you install it, it lasts for two, three, four, five months, and then it stops working and you throw it away. Uh, with our lights, we haven't cut any corners. Uh, we manufacture our, pro our products using only the highest quality materials, which is powder-coated cast aluminum, uh, beveled glass, uh, monocrystalline solar panels, which are infused in tempered glass. These are the uh, same solar panels you find on rooftops. So uh, we put a two-year warranty behind all of our products. And the reason we're able to uh, sell these as commercial is because of their longevity, their brightness, their duration, uh, and the quality. So when we look at these different designs you have, all of these are all of these are solar powered. So you've you've designed these to where the solar panel is on the top in some positions, or like for example, I saw this this outdoor lighting on the building right here, like this unit. You know, I assume these are your lights. That's you right. Design them so that you have the solar panel in a spot where it's going to collect the sun. Is that is that well? Actually, that's a really good question. The solar panel on those particular lights is the actual head of the light itself. Hmm. So uh, we we have created a new technology with solar panels where we're actually able to bend the solar panels into the shape of the round portion of the light, uh, which we have a patent on, which allows our lights. Uh, it's called a morph technology. Uh, and by doing that, it allows the sun to hit the solar panel no matter what direction uh, the sun might be in, whether it be directly overhead uh, or whether it be setting, depending on which direction you have that particular model light installed. Um, the only direction we don't uh, recommend mounting a solar light is 
if you have a wall and you're putting it on a wall, if the wall is facing north, that would probably be the only uh, suggestion I would give you as far as where not to place a light. So these light setups, I mean, what type of light output can you expect from these? Is it is it comparable to a, a wire unit or is it, yeah. is it less or what is it like? Yeah, it depends, again, on, uh, we have about 100 different models of solar lighting. So uh, when I speak to park owners and, and they tell me about the lighting in their park, uh, you know, I find out what their wants and what their needs are. Um, some parks are dark and they don't have wiring because it's been cost prohibitive to run and dig and trench electrical wiring. With our lights, depending on which light you, you purchase will depend on the brightness uh, that you get. I mean, we've got lights that everything is measured in lumens rather than watts. So uh, depending on the light that you, you purchase, based upon how bright and what you're trying to achieve in your particular park, uh, will determine the brightness. And to give you an example, we've got lights that uh, are 150 lumens, which is roughly 20 watts. We've got lights that are 300 lumens, which are roughly 40 to 50 watts, uh, all the way up to 900 lumens, uh, which you see here is the GS100 in the top left of your screen. Uh, that one right there, the Centennial, is, is uh, roughly 150 watts. And, and on a 10-foot pole, that light will give you a 40-foot diameter spread of light. So you've worked with a lot of parks to install lighting throughout them. What is what are the big questions that that owners and operators have, and and what are your answers for those? Like, what is their if they were to give you the first question that they have for you, what is that? Do they last all night? <laughs> and do they last all night? <laughs> and, they, and they do. They do. <laughs> because of our rechargeable lithium-ion batteries uh, and be, in the type of solar panels that we have. When you take the light out of the box, it's got roughly a 50% charge in the batteries. So when you take that light out of the box and turn it on and install it on the pole, if you get a one to two days of sun, it's going to fully charge the batteries. If the next five days are cloudy, rainy, snowy, or overcast, that light is still going to come on when the sun goes down automatically and stay on all night until the sun comes up. As a photo cell, so it's true dust to dawn operation, you don't have to turn it on, you don't have to turn it off. Uh, there is no timer. Uh, but even in the winter months, when we have uh, longer night hours, the lights still perform all night uh, until the sun comes up. That's actually a good point. So there's no timer. How does it work? Does it have like a little sensor and it, it just detects how dark it is out? That's right. It's a photo cell that's installed into the head of each light. Uh, it's about the size of a green pea, a little tiny pea. And uh, we incorporate it into all of our lights. So as soon as it gets to a certain darkness outside, uh, which is dusk, the light will come on automatically uh, and stay on all night until the sun comes up. And when it gets to a certain brightness, it triggers the photo cell to turn the light off automatically. So, and you mentioned that it stays on all night because it's a lithium battery. It, it's going to have that same voltage all night too. It's not going to, it's not going to, you know, fade as the night goes along. Correct? Well, you're asking great questions, and, and I'm glad uh, that you are because that's a, a misconception that a lot of people have. Um, with our lights, for the first four hours, they are shining at 100% power. After four hours, the lights will go down to 50% power to help conserve duration uh, and longevity of, of, the, of the light itself, as well as uh, the battery power as well. So uh, you're getting 100% power for the first four hours, just to, to reiterate. After four hours, it goes down to 50% power for the rest of the night until the sun comes up. So what about the lithium battery inside these units? Does that thing, I think that holds a charge throughout the night and stays pretty steady. How does that work? Yeah, the, the, uh, when the batteries come out, the batteries are pre-installed in the lights. So when you take the light out of the box uh, and turn it on and install it on a pole, uh, the battery already has about a 50% charge. So uh, within a day and a half of direct sun hitting the solar panels, we'll fully charge those batteries. And let's say the next five nights, or excuse me, the next five days are cloudy, rainy, snowy, or overcast. Those batteries will hold a charge those next five nights that you had ugly weather outside and the lights will still perform. They'll come on when the sun goes down and stay on all night until the sun comes up. So 
I actually was just thinking a little bit about your lights. Because they're not wired, because they're not on the grid, they're technically off the grid lighting, right? I mean, it's self-contained. So, you know, right. we're obviously we're obviously operating within a disaster right now with this whole coronavirus thing. I mean, the areas have been hit by tornadoes and fires and all that type of stuff. There's got to be a safety factor in having this lighting within a, within a business, correct? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I've had customers uh, that own parks, uh, I've had uh, even my own family have have lights that, that are down in Florida and uh, there was a couple of hurricanes last year that came back to back knocked out power to thousands and thousands of people and I had customers calling me up thanking me that with our lights the power grid was out they had zero power but their exterior lighting with our solar lighting still came on and still gave them a sense of security uh, and safety without Without these lights, they would have had nothing. It would have been completely pitch dark. And that's another factor uh, with these lights. You know, they're not stadium bright lights. They're not intrusive. They're not the type of lights that you walk onto a car lot and see. They're bright enough so that you can see what's coming out of the shadows for safety and security, uh, even when we're uh, not dealing with serious issues like a pandemic. But if you want to walk your, your, your dog early in the morning or, or late at night, uh, they're bright enough so you can see what's coming out of the shadows. So it's, it's really good for safety and security uh, as well, yes. So um, a park, when I'm just thinking of all the applications of this within a park, I mean, there's, there's probably a lot of use cases where you find where you're going to install parks that may have had a few traditional standard light poles set up, maybe on the driveways or whatever, and all of a sudden you're unlocking this lighting ability for them. So I imagine you have units that are both on high poles, but maybe the, the gr close to the ground and building and all that type of stuff. So folks can get really creative with this, this lighting process. What is that, what is the thoughts that they need to have in mind when they're when they're going to add your type of lights? Is it just like, hey, let's replace our existing ones with these, or should they think a little bit outside the box? Okay, so there's a couple of different uh, answers to your question. Uh, the first is, if they have existing lights in their park uh, that are electrical or gas, um, and when you're looking at the, the overall power bill or gas bill every month, and you're looking to decrease uh, those numbers, a good way to do that is to convert your your uh, existing lights with solar. So all you would need to do with our lights is cut off your gas or cap off your electricity, remove your existing light from the pole, and you could slide our lights onto your existing pole, tighten up three set screws, turn the light on, and you're done. Saving a lot of time, saving a lot of money, and at the end of the day, saving a lot of money on your power uh, or gas bills as well. Uh, a lot of park owners also have dark areas in their park that they wish they had lighting, but because the cost to run wiring and dig and trench is 40 or $43 a square foot, it adds up really quickly and becomes very expensive, which has uh, hindered them from doing so. And with our lights, as I mentioned before, uh, there is no wiring, digging, trenching, or electrical whatsoever. All you need is somebody who's uh, proficient in pouring a small concrete foundation if they don't already have poles installed uh, and they can have light anywhere they want as long as it receives direct sunlight. I love this. What do you see? I mean, and I don't know if you have hard numbers on this, but what would an average savings be for a park if they're switching over from, say, standard wired lighting to something like this? Is there any numbers out there for that? Well, uh, overall numbers, I've got uh, basic numbers. The, the cost to run electricity to one electrical light is roughly $80 a year. The, the cost to run gas to one gas light is roughly $140 a year. Mm -hmm. So if you do the math, depending on how many lights you have, uh, if you're taking that uh, amount of money out of the equation of what you're spending per light each year, uh, your return on investment is, is within two and a half years to three years, and then you have no ongoing costs uh, other than the batteries every three to five years, which are very inexpensive. And do they order the batteries from you, or do they, you just say go on eBay and find them? Yeah, they do. Our, our batteries are proprietary, so they'll always want to call me directly. Uh, I put my phone number and my email here just in case anybody has any questions from uh, your viewers and they want to reach out to me directly. Uh, all of the batteries need to be purchased directly through me. All of the lights should also be purchased uh, directly through me. Not only will they get the best price, uh, but I'll be able to ship as the manufacturer from Atlanta directly to uh, your customers. 
So the company is Gamma Sonic. This is solar lighting. I've met Matt a few times at the different trade shows. They're big supporters of our industry and they're big supporters of you. These are useful for your parks. And I know as we go, as we come out of this coronavirus thing, folks are going to be looking for ways to um, reduce costs and, and improve amenities at that lower price point. So these, the solar lighting is really useful. Matt, what's the best way for them to reach? I know you mentioned your phone number. Go ahead and give them that and how else can they reach out to you? Yeah, thank you. Uh, they can reach me. Uh, uh, my phone number and best way to reach me is 727-688-5030. Uh, or they can email me with any questions that they have at matt at gammasonic.com. I appreciate your time today, Matt. If you have any questions for him, uh, post them below. I'll make sure that he has a chance to address those. Um, we're bringing on you all these videos in order to help connect you with the vendors that support our industry. Um, we're not charging them for this. This is just, hey, come in here and, and help out you as an operator and connect with these vendors that support our industry. So we appreciate your time today, Matt. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Have a good one. Be safe.